Hi, I'm Jackie Otero, and welcome to 3300 and Climbing presents The Turntable, a roundtable discussion featuring industry professionals, artists, students, and anyone with a vested interest in the music industry. Today we have a special guest, singer-songwriter Julia McDonald. Thank you for joining us. So today is a special episode of The Turntable. We're going to be talking about women's perspectives in the entertainment industry. And I want to start off um, with a statistic from the Huffington Post that says last year in 2016, women artists made up only 12% of the artists at music festivals. And so this is kind of reflecting what's happening in the corporate business world too, where there's a lot of limitations for women to reach the very top of their game. And so I'd like to start off by asking you guys, what do you think we as women can do to further other women in the music industry? Well, first, I would say that we have to start by not being afraid to have someone else being in the spotlight. Um, we're taught to compete against each other at an early age. You know, who's the prettiest? Who can do this the best? And I guess it carries on until when we're older. But we have to change, you know, and change is happening now right now as we all speak. <laughs> Agreed. Um, and I think collaborating with other females in everything that we do and getting used to being aware of whether or not there are other females in the room with us when we take on new projects. I mean, it starts with us and then we set that example and other people can then hopefully follow suit. Yeah, and I think that's not limited just to women's issues, but for diversity in general. Whenever you're putting together an event or you have a team of any sort working on a project, look around the room and think to yourself, do all these people look like me? Are there other people that I can get in the room that bring together different perspectives? So I think with women, with people of other races, sexual orientations, it's you're always going to have a more interesting product when you diversify the voices that are present, I think. Um, what about from an artist's perspective? What do you think we can do as women to help push each other in the industry? Um, I think mostly at a local level is what I can speak of, obviously. Mm -hmm. But um, I think for me, it's when, when I find other women who I, who I believe in, I know how hard it is to like, know the right people like locally. So I, I just share my, my contacts or like I'll send out their information to people I know because I know it's harder to, to meet them on your own than it is. like through someone else. So I think just like not being afraid to see others succeed. Like mm -hmm. I think what you guys were talking about is oftentimes women compete against each other. And as long as they're not in your genre, like it's not competition. And there is room for everyone. I mean, not always, but but I think we, it's just not being afraid to see others succeed. Like you guys said. So when you see other women in the industry, what do you do? Do you approach them? How do you start that collaboration process? I feel like collaboration is necessary. Like when you see another female that wants to work with another female, it kind of boosts your confidence because usually executives or men in power, they're always men. So when you see another female in a high position, it makes you like want to collaborate with them more because it's different from, like what you were saying, it's different from what we usually see. So when a female is in power, it's, it's like it gives us more confidence to want to collaborate and work together because it's something different that we want to you know, push forward. Sometimes I see, especially young women in the industry, that sort of do kind of automatically take a backseat, or they, you know, are happy to kind of be the one to take notes and to maybe not put their voice in the mix. So I think just encouraging other women, especially young women in the industry like yourselves, you know, to not be afraid to voice their opinion. And yeah, if you're an intern or you're, you know, an entry level person, yeah, you might be doing some menial tasks. But if you're working for a company or for a manager or whoever it may be, think about how you can add value there. You know, think about, okay, yes, my job right now is to take notes and do the mail and get some coffee. You know, you're not going to feel very important doing those things. But look around the company and see where can I add value? Where are they missing out on a revenue opportunity? Or what is a strategy that I could suggest that could maybe help them get to the next level with an artist? Um, so I would just encourage young women to not be afraid to show that they do have a strategy and they have a voice to bring to the table. I agree. I think that's probably one of the, could be a disadvantage or an advantage. Um, sometimes just as a young female, y people, um, they m underestimate you. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and I've, I've seen that. And until y you are 
confident enough to voice your opinions and prove yourself, that's when people start realizing, okay, you have value. And they don't look at you because of your sex, they just look at you at, at okay, you're a good employee that has a lot to offer and it has nothing to do with, you know, anything else about you. It's about what you know. So it's, you know, just getting that initial confidence, I think, to mm -hmm. break that barrier. Yeah. I think it's like difficult to get people to take you <coughs> um, seriously past what you look like too. I think um, sex definitely sells in the music industry. And I feel like a lot of women who go into it know that and use it to their advantage, which I guess it is an advantage because mm -hmm. like it's, it's the entertainment industry. But um, I think gaining respect past what you look like is really important and something that you should aim for like when you're trying to make it. Because mm -hmm. I mean, that's your looks aren't gonna last forever. Mm -hmm. So. I would just add that one advantage that I've seen as a woman in the industry, and I came from an artist management background, and the first band that I managed was four guys. And I actually think it was an advantage for me as a woman because they sort of looked to me, I hate to, it is stereotype, but kind of like for motherly advice, you know, because I felt like with an emerging band, a lot of what you're doing is coaching and strategizing and nurturing and developing and all of that. And I think that um, they gave me a little bit more respect um, because I wasn't just one of the guys with them. I was the, often the only female in the room. And I think they sort of watched what they said a little bit because I was there. Um, and I think a lot of artist management is about nurturing talent. And I think that women, you know, kind of naturally often do that well. How do you deal with rejection and coming up to a closed door? What do you do at that point? Do you have any advice for people trying to get through a closed door in the industry? Well, for me, I, I don't take like no for an answer. I just look at it as another opportunity. Like if this one is no, then there's going to be something else out there for me. Everything is a learning experience. So if I didn't get this opportunity, I mean, there might be a reason why, or maybe there's something better out there for me. I know it has nothing to do with me being a female, but I mean, I just take it as a learning lesson. If I didn't get this, then I'll just work harder to get to the next level or get to the next opportunity that's out there. Mm -hmm. I used to, I used to take rejection really personally, like, and I'm so sensitive and I don't mean to be, but like I'd cry at everything. And I started uh, performing and trying to get into this when I was in like eighth grade. And uh, so all throughout high school, I, I couldn't take rejection. And my mom said to me flat out, she's like, maybe this isn't the business for you. <laughs> and she was right. Like it, it was, I was full on in depression at some points because of like, just like, cause I was competing a lot as far as singing, like act, doing actual competitions and I hated it. And uh, I think what I, what I learned this is about to get like super spiritual, but like, is that everybody vibrates on different levels. And in order to like attract the right people, you have to start vibrating on their level. And uh, I may not be vibrating on like the, the top executive of a record like label right now, but like, I feel like you, you can't go from zero to vibrating with them because they didn't either. Like they had to work their way up. So I just look at it that way is I'm just not ready for that opportunity, but I will be. And I'm working my way up to like, being on their level. Mm -hmm. I had to really have a conversation with myself and really understand like, did I really, is this something that I really wanted to do, you know? And did you really have a purpose? And in that point when you decide like, this is what I wanna do or this is what I wanna talk about or this is who I wanna be, I feel like when the door closes and there's a window, there's a window and I always find that window. And I don't know, you just have to be truthful with yourself. And, and know who you are. That's the only way you can survive anybody telling you you're not good enough or you should do this, you should change that, you shouldn't look like that, you shouldn't be like that. You have to truly know who you are. And until then, you're gonna keep attracting and vibrating on lower levels. And I finally realized who I am, so I feel good. <laughs> what is your inspiration? Why did you get into the music industry? Why is this? where you want to be, and who do you look up to in the industry? Well, <laughs> I guess for me as an artist, um, I, I want to be a voice, you know, a voice in, in my culture. I study a lot of religions, and, you know, I've, I'm doing a play with a lot of my songs, Black Girl Magic, you know. I believe that there's magic in my skin and my heritage, and I want to find all of that, you know, whether there's secrets or whatever, and I want to reveal that to the world in melodic lyrics. You know, I want to do that. And that's what moves me, 
You know, I feel like everyone should use their platform for whatever you want to do to this world. And that's what I want to do. I feel like everyone has a calling, and that's mine. I hear it. I hear it calling my name. Take whatever it is that you um, are doing for fun, what you do in your free time, and find a way to get paid for it. And because what you're doing in your free time for free, uh, you obviously love it and you have like a real passion for it. And so when I, from when I was very young, uh, the music and, and film industry, that was what I lived for. I mean, I, pr I was kind of a nerd and was making people act in my movies all the time. And I would put on some, some concerts and uh, using the bed as a stage. Um, but it was, I mean, it created this soundtrack to my life, and I, I relate everything to music. You know, I have all of my memories have a song attached to them, and when I hear that, it reminds me about that time in my life. And I know I'm not even close to the only one that has that feeling, so I can see how important it is to culture, just generally. And I wanted to be a part of that conversation, whether it was contributing creatively, not so much, but helping, you know, my skills are organizational and I, I really like planning and reading contracts and not everybody loves that and so there's a job for all of us out there. We just have to find our niche. That's true. Um, when I was younger and and I think the reason I want, like the main reason, because I could be at a local level and make enough money for the rest of my life, but I really do have like a lot of ideas that I, that I just want to pursue. And um, when I was younger, uh, I, I still have OCD, but not on the same level as I did when I was younger. Like, it's like real OCD, not like everything has to be organized, like what people think OCD is, like actual OCD. And the only thing that stopped, like, the obsessive thoughts was singing. So, like, literally, like, I could pick up my guitar and sing, and, like, it would stop from, like, just, like, destroying myself mentally. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, like, that's, that's powerful. Like, that's powerful yeah. that, like, music can do that for There's you. So when I do get the platform that I want, I want to like start, I'm like shaking talking about this, I don't know why I'm so sorry, <laughs> but I wanna start like a, some sort of like mental illness center where it like focuses around like, um, not only like music therapy, but like uh, aromatherapy and like natural medicine and, and stuff like that. All right, so at this point, I wanna thank the panel so much for the conversation today. And I do want to turn it over for our performance today. So performing her original song, No Good For Me, let's welcome Julia McDonald. <laughs> With you, I'm just not in love with the things you do. I only have so many pieces left to give to you. You hit me like a drink going in the boat. I wanted you so bad, but there wasn't enough. And if I had any left, I'd give it all to you. But it takes two. You're no good for me, and I'm so much better for myself. Than you're no good for me And I gotta stop worrying about myself And I love you But I love me the most Oh, I love you But if you loved me, you would show I spend all my time thinking of new ways How we can be close, you'll see back at your place If that's all you want from me, then you can leave Or leave it to me I think I'm all talkers when I walk out the door It never closes, I was never sure If I could give up my love for you If I wanted to, I do, I do, I do You're no good for me And I'm so much better for myself Then you're no good for me And I gotta start worrying about myself And I love you But I love me the most I can spend all my time listening to your lies I can spend all my time listening to your lies I can spend all my time listening to your lies Waiting for you to realize I can spend all my time listening to your lies I can spend all my time listening to your lies I can spend all my time listening to your lies Waiting for you to realize that You're no good for me And I'm so much better for myself and you're no good for me And I gotta start worrying about myself And I love you 